Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Doing Life with Ken and Tabitha. We are pumped, and I got a special show for you today. Today is entitled Home Buying 101, and I got my main man with me today, Mike Collier. Say hello to the audience today. What is going on, good people? (laughs) Glad to be here. I'm excited that you're here today. Um, For those of you all who do not know Mike, Mike is a real estate mogul. He does a little bit all things real estate. And we're just excited to have you on the show. You know, my goal behind this show was there's a lot of people who are renting and not owning. Mm. And we simply want to give them some keys of home ownership, steps that they need to take. Then there's some people who are thinking of selling and they don't know whether they should sell in this market. Yeah. There's some people who want to invest. And I don't know. I just believe like home ownership is actually a part of the covenant package, almost like a promise from God, because he talks about um, him giving us houses and lands Mm -hmm. and this and that and the other and leaving an inheritance to our children's children. So I don't know. I just believe that this is an important part of every person's portfolio. And so can you just tell a little bit about who you are, what you do? Yeah, absolutely. So again, Mike Collier, uh, originally from uh, Atlanta. All right. uh, ATL. ATL. What's up, y'all? And, uh, and then I came down here to Orlando uh, to start working for Disney, worked okay. with Disney for a little while. Okay. Uh, so, you know, my wife and I, we met way back in eighth grade. Okay. And then we reunited and ended up in, right here in Orlando. Uh-huh. So now we got two beautiful kids, what? you know, nine years old, five years old. So I'm a dad. Uh-huh. I'm, a, I'm a husband. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did a podcast earlier about humility. We'll let you get that later <laughs> on right now. We'll just keep it rolling. Okay, all right. And for those people who are wondering, we are not brothers. No, we, we are not. And we're not even cousins. It's Although, uh-huh. although uh-huh. it's a large part of the reason why we started attending a live church. Because? Because my wife saw you uh-huh. on YouTube and said, he looked like Mike. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And said, we got to go see who this is. Right, right, right? right. This impersonator, Yeah, there's right? not a lot of brown-skinned brothers with brown-looking <laughs> eyes. And, you know, well, your beard's a little grayer than mine, but we ain't going to talk about that right now. <laughs> That's you know not. What I'm saying. But anyway, man, I just love your heart. I love your family. You guys have just jumped in from the day that you've started coming to our church, yeah. which, how long has it been now? Uh, Two years now. Two years yeah. now, and you've just gotten involved. You bring a boatload of people to church. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about all kinds of people that you come across in the business world. And uh, your wife works at Disney. You yep. used to work. You're just a stand-up couple, man. And we have similar backgrounds. I used to be a real estate guy yeah. before I was a pastor. And so I really have a heart for real estate. Um, I'm investing a little bit here and there now. Nothing to really take me away from my my main thing that I'm yeah. doing, which is preaching. <laughs> but um, I'm having some fun with it. But I just thought that this would be a benefit for our audience. Yeah. You know, just to hear some things from you. And so um, how did you get into real estate, man? How did you get into real estate? You know what? For me, it was when I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Okay. It's the way that a lot of people start in real estate. I read that book and it truly changed my idea of what entrepreneurship looks like, what time freedom could look like, what financial freedom could look like. And I realized that can all be done through real estate. Uh And so I started pursuing that at an earlier age, Mm -hmm. like I was in in my teens, Mm -hmm. um, knowing that real estate was where I wanted to go. uh, But I didn't have no cash to do it. Right. right? And so I decided, well, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll dibble and dabble in that a little bit. And so what I started doing was when I worked at Disney, I kept my foot on it. I I always stayed close to Uh real estate investing. Mm -hmm. Um, I started learning a lot more about how to flip homes. Mm -hmm. And so when I did finally leave Disney in uh, 2016, Mm -hmm. uh, I jumped right into real estate investing. Okay. And I started flipping homes. I was flipping mobile homes. Okay. Um, and I had made enough money to where I was able to even start doing some hard money lending. So I was lending money out to investors who were looking to flip homes. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. And then I got into wholesaling. So okay. I, I became a partner uh-huh. in a wholesaling firm. So I started wholesaling properties as well. Uh-huh. And, I, and when I was flipping homes, I was doing a lot of the work myself. Okay. So I learned a lot about construction, uh-huh. you know, load bearing walls and all, all the stuff. Right. Uh-huh. And so that is actually it's so beautiful how God sets things up like that, because that experience is now helping me to sell and be a great real estate advisor as I am now, Uh because when I walk through properties and people are like, man, I really wish the, I wish that wall wasn't there. I wish these cabinets would be different. I'm like, well, you actually can do that. And I have, I have the people to do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's just been, uh, it's just been great, man. And I'm, I'm glad that I chose real estate because Uh real estate for me is a great vehicle Uh to wealth. Right. Right. It's a great vehicle. It's not, it's not just a destination. It's a great vehicle that allows me to do a lot more. 
Yeah, I mean, I did the same thing. I actually started reading real estate books while I was in college still. Mm -hmm. So I was living in an apartment, and I just, for whatever reason, was like, I want to build apartments, mm -hmm. and I want to build shopping centers. And I started reading books in college about real estate development. Now, I was in business school, and they was teaching me accounting and all this stuff that I knew I would never use. So I said, I'm going to start investing in real estate. Yeah. So I actually um, put my first company together um, when I was in college, it was called Sunrise Properties. And um, it was me, and it was my dad, and it was a family friend, and none of them had any money, man. They, yeah. they had good credit score, and I just thought because they was older, I'm like 20, I thought because they was older, that was going to qualify me to go out and get some duplexes, and it didn't. Negative. I'm telling you, I don't think we purchased one property together. <laughs> and so after I, I graduated school back in 2000 with a business management degree, mm -hmm. and I always thought I would be in business. I, I was an entrepreneur since middle school, and so I never thought I would be in ministry. I always thought I would be in business. So I got my business degree. Mm -hmm. I moved from West Virginia over to Washington, D.C., and I never took a job working mm -hmm. for somebody. I went right into real estate sales. Right on. And so my wife, she was actually an executive assistant making 35000 a year, and we both lived off her salary while I went to get my real estate license. And that's all that I did. From day one, I sold real estate, and for the first year, I sucked. I just wasn't good at it. I couldn't close things, but I just stuck with it. Mm -hmm. And then I went from, I started in commercial real estate, then came back over to residential, found some success in residential. Um, but all of it started, I mean, years ago, I remember seeing my dad when I was growing up, he would have maybe one or two rental properties. It wasn't nothing magnificent. Yeah. I seen my dad move a house on an 18-wheeler from one part of a city and hook it up for my uncle, his brother. Mm -hmm. And I was down there, and he would be putting a sewer together. You know, he's just yeah. like a handyman. He would do it all himself. And I think that he sowed the seeds of real estate investment into me even when I was a kid. Yeah. So as I came through college, I said, this is what I'm going to do. And I went right into it. And thankfully, really, by the time I was 24, 25, I was probably making $500,000 a year. Mm. And so as a, a career, I think it's super lucrative. Yeah. And we don't really want to get into that today because I believe there's there's just people that you start with just owning something. Correct. I believe. Do you believe that? Like Absolutely. That's the beginning Absolutely. of wealth creation is own your home. Don't just throw away money and rent. You know, I, I remember as a, as a young kid, I don't know that... You know, we lived, we, we kind of bounced around a little bit. We, we lived uh, with my, you know, my, my mom was a single mom for a little while. Um, we, even when she got married, they were renting an apartment. So we lived there. Then we, you know, even before she got married, we were living with my grandmother. Um, my grandmother didn't own that home. She was renting that home. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when I looked back over, like, my childhood, mm -hmm. Nobody really owned their home. Okay. And so it was in it was once I got into sixth grade mm -hmm. that my parents bought their first home. Okay. Right. And I remember how big of a deal that was. Because okay. now I knew we were gonna be here for a while. Okay. Right. I'm entering sixth grade. I'm uh -huh. on a whole completely side different side of town. Uh -huh. I am the new kid now, but I'm actually gonna grow up with these kids. And I actually I met my best friend to this day. He was my best man in my wedding, uh -huh. everything in sixth grade. And he's still my best friend to this day. Oh, Matter wow. of fact, he's a real estate investor. Okay. He buys apartment complexes in Atlanta. Okay. So I saw him getting it out the mud. I saw him uh -huh. when he bought his very first house to rent uh -huh. and then, you know, uh, you know, bought duplex and, and, and was creating opportunities for people to have a place to rent. And then ultimately, mm -hmm. they even created a program where the people who were renting mm -hmm. could actually buy, almost like a rent-to-own program. Mm -hmm. and, and so... I remember how impactful it was for uh, for me when we bought our first home, and I was like, "Man, I, I want to do that as right. well." Like one of these right. days, I'm definitely going to own my own house. Yeah, and um, and and so I also know that, uh, you know, having home ownership does change the trajectory of even children. Okay, right, in a family because mm -hmm. they have a lot more stability. Mm -hmm. When your kids know mm -hmm. that they're not going to have to move again mm -hmm. another two or three years, mm -hmm. they don't have as many trust issues. They're able to make friends that are mm -hmm. that are going to be friends for a while. Mm -hmm. You know, um, they're they're able to focus a little bit more at school. And so you actually will see the studies that show that academics mm -hmm. actually their their ac academic actually increases. Yeah, because they know that they have that stability. Well, here's the million dollar question: Why is owning better is owning better than renting? And if owning is better than renting, why? Good question. So mm -hmm. I, I, all right. So yes, mm -hmm. owning is better than renting. Okay. Um, one of the biggest reasons why, though, is mm -hmm. because what we're seeing right now, especially, mm -hmm. our rents are skyrocketing. Right. 
right? Yeah. A lot of landlords are trying to trying to get everything back that they did not get right. during COVID. <laughs> I was just talking to a brother earlier who cut my hair. He said it was a two bedroom above his shop. They wanted twenty eight hundred a month for a oh. two bedroom. <laughs> wow. <laughs> He's like, I, I, what is going on? I said, yeah, rates are going up. That was downtown, but you know what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. Yeah. So so there's a lot <laughs> of landlords who weren't getting paid during the pandemic, and they felt like, you know what. I, if I can't get my money now, I'll get it later. Yeah. And so now we're starting to see rent, rents skyrocketing. But, you know, your rent will always increase. Uh -huh. Your mortgage doesn't increase. Mm -hmm. Right. Your, your, your principal and interest doesn't increase. That's a fixed rate. Right. And you're paying something off, which <laughs> means that as over time, mm -hmm. the home value increases and the difference between what your home value is and what you have left on that loan, mm -hmm. that's called equity. Yeah. Right. That's money that's literally in the walls of the home that you live in. That's the one of the best bank accounts there is because you can do so much with that. And let's just break that down for a minute. So if you buy a home at two hundred thousand dollars, you put, let's just say, five percent down, which would be ten thousand dollars. So you owe one ninety on it. Mm -hmm. And let's say that you pay it down to one eighty, but the house appreciates to two ten. So now you have the difference between two ten and one eighty is thirty thousand dollars of equity. There you go, and that's really the beginning of wealth creation. That's how it starts. And when you rent, you pay let's just say two thousand dollars a month. Mm -hmm. Let's say that's twenty four thousand dollars a year. Let's say that you you live there two years. That's forty eight thousand dollars. And when you leave, they just kick you out, and you don't get anything at all. Not so that. basically, you've invested twenty four thousand dollars, and you get absolutely nothing. The other way around, you sell your house in two years, and you could walk away $30,000, not including closing costs. That's the difference. That's the big difference. Mm -hmm. That's the big difference. And, mm -hmm. and many times, you know, people are buying homes and living there a lot longer than two years. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, there's people living five, seven, 10 years in the same house. So what happens now? You, if, if you know that you've gotten a gain over the last two years, right. what more over the next eight years right. and you go to sell that home? Because now you've paid that loan down even further mm -hmm. and the house is worth that much more. Well, I'll just tell you what happened for us. And so the Lord called us from Gainesville. He says, it's time for you to expand your territory. And I thought I was going to send out another campus pastor. I never thought that I would move from Gainesville. But he said, I've called you mm -hmm. to go. And so we were praying about the city, he says, Orlando. So in 2018, we decide, okay, we're going to obey God and we're going to be a part of the launch team. And so we sold our house in Gainesville and we moved to Orlando. And at the time, it was like 2017, 2018. The market was good, but it wasn't like it was about to yeah, get. Yeah. And we bought a house. It was a five-bedroom home, 3,200 square feet. We bought it for $450,000. And I'm slapping high fives. I'm <sighs> like, bruh, because the house I bought in Gainesville in 2007 was $700,000. I came out of real estate. So for me to like dumb down into ministry was a really hard transition mm. because I was a kingdom builder and I was used to making a certain thing. So to me, hey, it's always going to be that way. So I left Washington, D.C. was like, oh, yeah, I'll take that $700,000 new home. <laughs> Yeah. And, I, and I, it struggled. I was cash strapped for many mm. years, but thank God for the grace of God. So I said, right. when I'm coming to Orlando, I ain't going to be house poor. Yeah. I said, $450,000, we'll take that. What I didn't know is that the market would shift. And I sold that house last year. Um, no, it was like seven months ago, like August. So mm -hmm. um, I sold it for seven hundred sixty thousand. Mm -hmm. I bought it for four fifty. I showed it you do the math. Yeah. Tax free money. Tax free. Come on. All I did was live there. I made three hundred thousand dollars. All that's I it. did was live there. And that's what I'm saying that people, And you're gonna live somewhere. <laughs> I'm gonna live somewhere. You know, and that's beautiful now. Of course I had to use a lot of that to fix up my new place and do all, all that kind of stuff. Right. So it wasn't just free cash. Right. I was able to give a lot yeah. and that's very important to yeah. me. So many different things. Mm -hmm. But that what was actually enabled me to get back into the flip game yes, because I just lived in a house for three years and just waited on the Lord and waited for the market to shift. And it did. And that always happens at some point. It, it, it's, you know, we talk <laughs> about the dream of home ownership, but the, the cool thing about home ownership is that it many times can fund your dreams. Right. So it doesn't necessarily, it, it's not that the house is the end all be all. Mm -hmm. That's just the beginning because mm -hmm. now that you have that, man, like I said, it's one of the best bank accounts you can have. Like if you have the equity in that house, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, the, the bank is going to give you, you will give you a loan towards that and say, right. hey, listen, you got a lot of money in the walls of your house. Right. We'll actually take some of the wall, the money out of the walls of your house and give that to you as a <laughs> loan. Yes, you're going to pay that back to us. Mm -hmm. But whatever you decide to use that for, you can go use it. And so we call that a cash out refi, yeah. right? When you refinance and you pull some cash out of your house. And uh, and so my wife and I, we did that recently. I did that too. Yeah. That's and, how and I got the money to fix up the house so that I could sell it for 760. There you go. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, and so, you know, we, we pulled out some, you know, we pulled out over a hundred thousand dollars out of, out of our walls of uh -huh. our house. 
and we still have over two hundred thousand dollars worth of equity. Right. Now we bought this house in twenty fourteen, so I'm not talking about you know mm-hmm. twenty years of home ownership, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I'm talking what ten years, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Nine, ten years, right? And so uh, it, it's it's really powerful and impactful uh-huh. uh, because there's so many of us who are like, man, I don't really have anything. You know, uh, so many people work day to day mm-hmm. and go to the, go to the same job, get the same paycheck mm-hmm. every single week and never feel like they're actually getting ahead. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so they, 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 they just hate mm-hmm. the next day because they have to do the same thing. It's like Groundhog Day all over again. Right. You're going to do that anyway. Right? right. Like whether that person owns a house or they're renting. Uh huh. They're going to be feeling that exact same way anyway, but at least if they own a home, mm-hmm. they could still be building something up so that they can have a legacy to live to leave towards their kids or, mm-hmm. again, begin to buy themselves out of that job and, mm-hmm. and start buying into their dream. Mm-hmm. You know, when I was in real estate, I would tell people this, and you can tell me, I mean, my God, that was 15 years ago. Tell me if these things still bear true. So when I, I would try to explain to people why home ownership is better than renting. Mm-hmm. I would say, number one, it's equity. And I think we talked about yeah. that. So basically, you're living in an appreciating asset. Um, the national average, I think, is 5% a year. But you'll get into certain markets that are like, and that's right. what happened to me between 2018, 2022. It yeah. on you, okay? And, um, and so you got equity. But I also think you have a tax advantage. And Absolutely. I don't think people understand that you get to deduct. Tell me if I'm right. You still get to deduct is it your principal? So you're writing off the interest on your mortgage. Your interest. Your, see, ta- see, is your you, taxes and insurance, or is it principal? I can't remember. Wh- which ones is it's, it? It's taxes and insurance. Taxes and insurance. Right. So and you have interest. your principal interest, taxes, uh-huh. and insurance. That's, uh-huh. That makes up your full mortgage payment. Right. right? But, now, but now, because you're paying interest mm-hmm. on this loan, they're going to send you an interest form every single year to show you, hey, here's how much you've paid in uh, in, in interest, mortgage interest, mm-hmm. you give that to the tax guy, uh-huh. and yeah, it, it it reduces the amount of taxes that you owe right ever at the end of every year. So I don't remember my equation back in the day, yeah. but for something, it was like paying a thousand dollars of rent is almost like paying seven hundred dollars of mortgage. Or that's probably like about that. right. Yeah, something yeah, like that. That's probably about right. Meaning that it's not apples to apples. So if you're paying, you know, a thousand dollars in rent, it's like when you have a mortgage because of your tax deduction, it's going to feel like yeah. $700, meaning that even if your mortgage payment's a tad bit more than your rent, your mortgage payment is still going to be better at the end of the year after you do your taxes. Right, right. And so not only do you have equity, you also have a tax advantage. I mean, there's just so many benefits with it. And in know? Florida, mm-hmm. don't forget, we don't have any state income tax. Okay. So we got a lot of people that are moving from New York, they're moving from California, they're moving from other states to come to Florida. It's almost like they, they're getting a raise as soon as they get here. Right. Because even if they keep the exact same job, they're keeping more in, in their paycheck. Right. Plus, if they're buying a home, now they have these deductions and they're also building their equity. It, it, it's, it's why so many people right. are moving into the state. Well, if it has those advantages, and I think the advantages are clear, why, don't, why are people renting? Why don't more people buy? Good question. So there's three <laughs> reasons why people don't buy. Uh-huh. It's fear, okay, credit, uh-huh. and money. Okay, talk about that. That's those. it. Uh-huh. And, and so when somebody <laughs> says, hey, you know, I want to buy, I'm thinking about buying a house, I say, well, why don't you own a home yet? Mm-hmm. It's going to be one of those three, th- three things that come up. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they don't necessarily want to admit it. Sometimes, sometimes it's just lack of knowledge. Okay. They, the lack of knowledge is because they, there is a bit of a fear uh-huh. of, um, of being accountable. Okay. So here's what I mean. I get people who say, yeah, man, my, my credit score is only like a 680, you know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, we don't have much of m- much money for a down payment. So we're just going to go ahead and rent for another one one or two years. Okay. And I say, okay, six, 680, huh? Uh-huh. You know you can buy a house with 680 credit, oh, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you can get approved for a loan at 680. Yeah. Uh-huh. As a matter of fact, 660, we got you, uh-huh. right? Okay, so so what were you saying about the down payment? Yeah, we don't have much money for a down. You know there's down payment assistance programs where you can actually buy a house with no money down, right? Uh-huh. Did you did you know that? Uh-huh. I heard something about that. Uh, okay, but I'm not really sure how that works. Okay, so you're fearful of understanding how that works or even asking the question about how that works because now once you know better, you got to do better, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And and so I, I try to help people in that conversation and say, listen, Let's let's put all three on the table, mm-hmm. credit, money, and fear. Mm-hmm. I got you on the fear part because we're going to help you with the knowledge and all that kind of stuff, right? Mm-hmm. You still have to take action, but I can at least give you the knowledge. Mm-hmm. Um, and then as far as the money part, like I said, there are op- options for you. And, you know, one of the most underused ways to buy a house or at least to get a down payment mm-hmm. is to get a gift. Okay. Gift funds. From who? 
anybody. Uh huh. Oh, you mean like a relative or somebody? A, a relative, a friend, uh -huh. a, a neighbor, anybody, right? And it, that gift could be, I can get $500 from you. Mm -hmm. I can get $1,000 from my grandma, whatever, whoever, right? And all it, all they have to do is present a letter to the to the lender or even an email mm -hmm. that simply says, I'm giving, I'm giving Mike $1,000 and he does not owe this money back to me. Mm -hmm. It can't be a loan. It truly is a gift. So back in the day when I was in real estate, which was more like 2000 to 2007, before the recession of 2007, 2008, um, we had 100% um, loan-to-value mm -hmm. loans, like no money down loans. Y'all still have those? There are loan programs that allow it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I had one. See, I'm, the, I'm that guy that will find a needle yeah. in a haystack. So when I moved to Orlando, my credit union, which is Delta Credit Union, oh, yeah. which is the airline. I know it. Do you know how I got a part of the Delta Credit Union? I used to be an intern for Enterprise Rent-A-Car when I was in college. And I looked on their website, and it says, if you work for any of these organizations, you can join our credit union. I said, I used to work at Enterprise Rental Card. He said, do you have proof? Bro, I don't know where I pulled proof out of a hat that I used you to work at though. Enterprise Rental Card. And they let me join there, and I got 100% down. What people say, oh, that don't exist anymore. No, you better keep looking. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, they're not a lot over the place, but I've seen some, I think, um, uh, NASA Federal Credit Union, Navy Federal Credit yeah, Union, yeah. Um, Delta Credit Union. Some of those credit unions might have those no money down programs. Yeah. Back in the day, we would match up the FHA, which is three and a half percent. Back in the day, it was three mm percent. -hmm. We would connect it with a Nehemiah, which was basically a nonprofit. They would allow that nonprofit money to connect to pay the other three percent to make okay. it 100 percent. Do they still have stuff like that? There's all kinds of programs, man. I, I, I'm sh I'm sure there is something like I just that. I mean, of there's another one. There's one percent conventional loans. Everybody's like, oh yeah, you got to put a minimum of three percent. No, actually, there's now one percent conventional loans. Okay. I'm not talking about FHA. I'm uh -huh. talking about conventional so loans. So you can maybe possibly get your closing costs paid by the seller, Correct. and then just come up with one percent. Correct. Uh huh. What about that? Um, I heard about. Have you heard about the? Is it the, I don't want to say the USDA, which sounds like the meat people. Um, no, it is, the, there is a USDA loan. Yeah, there's a loan yeah. that's like outside of the city limits. That's a no money that, down That's loan. USDA. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> in, in more of the rural areas, it has uh -huh. to be, it's, there's, a, there's a map, right? Okay. So the USDA map. Uh -huh. um, yeah, it does sound like we're talking about poultry yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, I, that can't be right. I'm rusty. Here. Right. I'm rusty. Let's talk about Matthew, Mark, well, Luke, and John. Uh, if get you go steaks. outside of it, yeah. And a no money down loan. <laughs> so, yeah, but in the rural areas, uh -huh. uh, they allow you to do 0% zero, zero down, mm -hmm. right? And um, and so the, we just check the USDA map with mm -hmm. the lender, preferred lender, and the, the lender will say, yeah, that, that actually qualifies. And and people who are hearing that might have a fear. Like, mm -hmm. man, if I don't put money down, what if this thing goes wrong and I got to get out of the house? It's just not as easy. There's a reason why people are renting. Yeah. And I just don't think in this kind of a market, I just feel like you can probably sell it as long as you don't go way up in price. Um, I just feel like you'll have appreciation. I feel like the detriment of renting is much stronger than the detriment of owning and maybe getting stuck. Because you can rent it out, you yeah. can rent a room, you can Airbnb it. I mean, when you got the asset, you can do some stuff. That's it. That's uh -huh. it. I just don't like the idea of letting some, and this is why I'm an entrepreneur as well. Uh -huh. I don't like the idea of my fate being in somebody else's hands. Yeah. I don't like the idea of my landlord liking how these home values are increasing so much that they decided to sell the house and now I got to get out. Right, right. I don't like that. I yeah. don't like the idea of me paying $2,500 or $2,000 a month in rent right now mm -hmm. and it might be $2,500 a, a year, a month next year, just mm -hmm. depending on how my landlord feels. Right. I, I don't like that. Right. Right. And so I like to have some certainty because uh -huh. I can also plan and you know set goals and everything for my family mm -hmm. if I have some of that certainty and, and home ownership allows you to have that. What if my credit jacked up? Do you have some way to help us? With yes. Credit? So help we, people? that's right. So mm -hmm. we have, um, you know, credit rebuilding services okay. that will, you know, we tie you in with the credit building. I don't do it personally, but uh -huh. I, you know, I have references and, and referrals. And so we refer you to somebody who uh -huh. can help you to build your credit. Now, again, it might take you three months. It might take you six months, nine months, 12 months, whatever it is, but at least you're working towards the goal. Bro, I done been there. When I first married Tabitha, her credit score was like five, mid fives. Mm. It's embarrassing. Mm. I'm happy to say that it, the last time I checked, it was like 840. And Ooh. I didn't even know a credit score could go to 840. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh, yeah, we yeah. call that walk on water credit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She got walk on water credit. But yeah. it didn't start that way. Yeah. Um, I remember I had to do old school. I pulled all of her bureaus, and then I began to dispute dumb stuff dispute dumb stuff. Mm -hmm. So I pulled all of them, Experian, TransUnion, whatever it is. And I began to dispute what I could. 
And then I learned tricks of as it relates to our credit cards that we have. Try to get them down to a 50% or less balance. That will help your credit things. Try not to have a bunch of different inquiries. Yeah. I mean, you can literally Google how to repair your credit. Absolutely. And you can do some things. I mean, you can go through a company yeah. like you have or, or know of. Or you can just do some things like I did, which was just um, prudence, um, knowing what to do, knowing what to dispute. And I'm happy to say that I haven't had a personal credit card in 15 years. Man, that's we a have business credit cards, but that, when I got out of debt and credit debt, I'm like, I'm never going back. Yeah, yeah run away. Now, lately, I've been like, well, I need a business one. Yeah. You know, because it's the whole rental car, yeah, airport yeah. thing. But I, for 15 years, yeah. I've yeah. been like, whatever. When you, listen, when you're earning miles and points and you don't have to pay for hotels and yeah. flights anymore just right. because you're using, it's the same thing you would have been using your debit card for, but you're responsibly using the credit card for. You got to pay that balance off every you gotta month. You got to pay it though. off. You got to pay, pay it off. off. And that's and the other thing. people can't do that. Well, and you also have to keep it at at least 30% or less, right? right? So you can't utilize all. You know, if you if you have a twenty thousand dollar, let's just say a five thousand dollar credit card, you can't yeah. keep it at forty nine ninety nine for thirty days. That's gonna hurt your credit. It's gonna hurt. Mm-hmm. You know, so they're looking at you keeping it under that thirty percent, what they call credit utilization, mm-hmm. so that they can actually help you to build the credit. And it truly does. Like credit cards are not the devil. Mm-hmm. Credit cards can actually help you to build your credit, right? Because it's a great way of showing. See, here's the other thing, man. Renting mm-hmm. doesn't go on your credit mm-hmm. unless you stop paying. And then it goes in. Your oh <laughs> yeah, right. All of a right, sudden, right. see, see, see. When it's benefiting the landlord, right. it ain't gonna go on your credit. It's just gonna benefit his pockets. I mean, there's so much stuff that we could talk about, and I'm not trying to make this like real estate 401. I want it to be 101. Yeah. But I will say this: um, what you're talking about is leverage, mm-hmm. leveraging. And so, uh, having a credit card is not the devil. My my thing is like. My whole goal is that we owe no man nothing but to love him. If I could do everything cash and be completely debt free, I would feel really good about it. Mm. If you listen to like Dave Ramsey, people like that, they would tell you, who cares about a credit score when you got cash? Mm -hmm. But if you come over into the real world, like um, we don't want you to try to save to buy house cash for the next 30 years of your life. That means that you don't understand leveraging. That's right. Leveraging is basically when you use somebody else's money to help you gain a little bit. That's right. And that's what you do whenever you get a loan. It's basically, I'm going to get a loan for 200000 but if my house goes up and I pay it down at two fifty, I'm going to make $50,000 because I leveraged somebody else's money. And so, yeah, that might be a great long-term plan that you want to be debt-free and owe no man nothing but love. But the reality, it's going to take you all of your life to get there if you do not know how to leverage properly. And so I just think that we shouldn't be afraid of loans or afraid of credit cards. We just have to use them with great diligence and discipline or they will come back to bite you. And this is why I say everybody needs a real estate advisor. That's why I don't even call myself a real estate agent. Like I'm a certified real estate advisor. What does that mean? It simply means that I'm keeping up on the market. I'm watching the market trends. I'm keeping up on what's happening with loans and and all of these things. I'm helping you very much like you have a financial advisor. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. You got a financial advisor because Mm -hmm. you don't know everything about stocks. You you, you can dibble and dabble. You can download Robinhood or whatever else, right? Right. And and buy some stocks, but you may not necessarily know about all of that. Mm -hmm. Just you have a legal advisor. Right. Church has a legal advisor. Right. Well, you also need a real estate advisor because it does change. The laws change. I get people who who used to be a realtor, you know, 30 years ago, and they're like, yeah, but well, when I did it, yeah, back when and back in my day. Bro, we used to do um, we used to do no income, no asset, 5% down loans. investment loans through Lehman Brothers. And that's why Lehman Brothers went belly up and <laughs> jacked the whole industry up. You can't talk about what we did 15 That's years exactly ago. It's right. not applicable. No That's more. exactly right. So you need a real estate advisor who's staying up on it, not somebody who just wants a commission check at the end. Right. Right. That's somebody who's, who's much more relational than transactional. Right. But it's also going to say, hey, listen, so I have this conversation with my, my clients. I say, hey, listen, you know, if, if you're watching this now and you don't own a home uh-huh. and we're talking about buying a home. Yeah, we're talking about buying this home, uh-huh. but guess what? We're already going to start talking about buying the next home because I'm going to start that. already talking about, hey, when you're ready to transition out of this, right. are we maybe we're turning this into a rental uh-huh. so you can go buy the next one. We're right. going to pull the equity out. Uh-huh. We're going to use that equity mm-hmm. that we've already talked about mm-hmm. to now use that as the down payment to buy your bigger and better home, mm-hmm. right? Now you got rental income coming from this. Mm-hmm. It's paying a large portion of your new bigger and better home. Mm-hmm. And so you might be paying the same, if not a lower payment than you were paying on the first home. Mm-hmm. So we start talking about that. With young people, especially, I'm talking about house hacking. Mm-hmm. House hacking is simply this, man. You buy a three-bedroom home, a four-bedroom home, you rent out those other three bedrooms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now your mortgage payment is being covered. Like, you can't tell me 
that you can't o- afford a home, mm-hmm. right? I don't care what your mortgage payment is right now mm-hmm. or, or what your rent payment is right now because, quite honestly, if you're smart about this, mm-hmm. you can be at the same, if not lower, mm-hmm. than what you're already paying. Right. There are ways to do it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It I comes mean, with some sacrifice. I don't know what the average rent is in Orlando, and people are watching from around the world. Yeah. And some of these principles might not completely apply to South Africa and um, Indonesia and where mm-hmm. other people are. But for me, here in this area, what's the average rent? Uh, you know, so if we're talking like a, a two bedroom, you're 17. right at about yeah, about seventeen hundred. You mean, know, and so you can probably buy a house for about two sixty at seventeen hundred a month. Um, can we find houses for two sixty? Yeah, we can find them. We can yeah. find them. I mean, so you might you know you might have to go a little bit further, further out, and, and right? yeah, it might be smaller. So regardless of where you live, if you're looking at uh-huh. You know, hey, I want to buy a house. I don't have much money, much credit, and all this kind of stuff. Uh-huh. Well, this is going to be sacrifices anyway, right. right? So, go ahead. Everything's going to be within. I mean, we can get you within an hour of downtown, let's say. <laughs> right, you know, right. um, but we we're not going to be able to get you downtown. I think my 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 point was that w- for what you're paying rent in, you can probably pay mortgage and get all of the same, get a lot more of the benefits. Get more of the benefits. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. I always used to tell people when I was in real estate that everybody is only 12 months away from owning at the most. Mm -hmm. Meaning that I feel like I could get your credit to the place. I feel like you could say everybody. So that's for the people that's like, they got this. Well, I'm going to buy a home one day. Well, I think like my encouragement to you would be like, start today. Like call a real estate advisor, call someone and say, pull my credit. Tell me what I got to do because I'm only six to 12 months away from buying no matter how bad my situation right. is. And I know that there are some people that's further along than that, but I just feel like I just want people to be blessed and successful, to be good with money, um, uh, to leave an inheritance for their kids' kids. And, um, man, it just depends on even what culture you come from and your background. I'm seeing p- certain people that their parents, you know, gave them money to they don't owe anything on their first house mm, when they got married. I've seen it. I wish, I wish they would. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I wish they would. But a lot of us are first generation or, or even second generation, but the last generation didn't give us that kind of substance. So now we got to work hard and we got to be good us. with money. Yeah. And so I, I, let's flip it a little bit. Do you feel like these principles that we're sharing, do you feel like they work for many cities around the nation just because my audience is so broad internationally or not sure. What do you think? I, I think most principles, most of these principles still work. Now, truth be told, like there right. are places like throughout the Caribbean, like you can, you, they don't even offer financing on homes. Like right. you got to buy, you got to pay a cash. Yeah. You there's know, certain parts so of Africa when I go that they just build, build the houses, the money comes in. They, yeah. Uh-huh. And, and, and they, they may not necessarily have any property taxes in a lot of these places. So there's uh-huh. a lot of these places where if you've ever gone to some of these countries where you see a house that's just like, it's just the cement and uh-huh. it's like, it looks like nobody's touched it for the last 20 months, there's that's a, because they bought that. They own the land. Yeah, yeah exactly, right? A lot they, but they build it as they get the money. Mm-hmm. So they get the money, they put some more into it, and then it might be untouched for the next four months. Yeah. And they get In some America, money. we won't even let you start until you went through the, the building and permitting process. Absolutely. And the assumption is that, yeah. Absolutely. Well, what about for those people who maybe they already own a home and they're thinking about selling? And there's a lot of fear in the market right now of where interest rates are going and inflation. Mm. And can you just speak to where the market is? And should I be buying in this market? Should I be selling in this market? Should I hold up, fold up, walk away, run? What, what's the deal? I'm, I'm really glad you asked me that, honestly. <laughs> and, and here's why. Um, I, we're in what I'm calling a wealth window. Okay. A wealth window. And here's why I'm saying that. So there's already very little in- inventory. Mm-hmm. Uh, very little inventory uh, really across the country. Mm-hmm. Most places like Orlando is sitting is hovering right at around two months of inventory right now. What mm-hmm. that means simply is that if there were no more houses that were put on the market in Orlando, the houses that are currently on the market for sale mm-hmm. would be depleted within the next two months. Okay. Okay. So it would be gone that fast. Mm-hmm. All right. So with very little little inventory, mm-hmm. we still have buyers out there who want to buy. However, mm-hmm. many of them are choosing not to buy because of where the interest rates are right now. Mm-hmm. Okay, interest rates are sitting around six and a half percent, seven percent. Okay. Now, back in my day, that was a good deal. Yeah, six and a half percent was like what? 
I think I got my very first first uh-huh. house. I bought my first house in 2006. Uh-huh. And yeah, I think I got I locked in at a on an, on an adjustable rate mortgage, yeah. uh-huh. right? And I was I was at eight and a half percent, and then it was going to balloon after that, after like the next right. three years. Right. But yeah. we've kind of been spoiled for the last five years at these two and three percent. So go right. Ahead. Mm-hmm. And so, so, but that, but so that's a large reason. Mm-hmm. That's one of the large reasons why the inventory is so tight right now. Because for a lot of a lot of um, our our folks, we have like people who have been on. I mean, they locked in at a two percent, three percent interest rate, and they're not trying to give that house up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't want to sell that house. Yeah, that's where I was when I sold mine. It was three yeah. percent, three point one. See, uh-huh. so 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 there's a few things that are happening right now. But I'll, I'll go back to the wealth window. So what that wealth window is looking at, here's how, here's how we're looking at that. You don't have a lot of houses on the market. You still got people who want to buy, but the interest rates are high. Mm-hmm. Now, if you start looking at what the Fed, if you're watching the news, the Fed mm-hmm. is talking about pausing hikes on the interest, or uh, uh, pausing interest rate hikes, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So what's going to happen is we're expecting by the end of this year, maybe early next year, mm-hmm. that these mortgage interest rates are going to start softening again. Mm-hmm. What's going to happen when interest rates start going down? Mm-hmm. All the pent-up demand from all these buyers, mm-hmm. They're gonna. It's gonna start happening, right? Mm-hmm. That pipeline's gonna start getting clear. You're gonna get a lot of buyers who are flooding into the market, but there's not enough homes for them to sell. So if you have a very big demand, but you have very little supply, what does that do to prices? Mm-hmm. They increase. Okay. So when should you be buying a home? Right now. Mm-hmm. You buy a house now. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's at a higher interest rate, but we're already expecting interest rate to start to drop mm-hmm. in the another, another six to nine months. Yeah. So if that's gonna happen, you simply refinance into a smaller right. uh, in a lower interest rate. Right. But you also get to get the equity gain, the mm-hmm. home value gain. I always well, say this. Key. Listen, there are people who are sitting on the sidelines watching home prices and going, man, mm-hmm. home prices are just crazy. They keep on going up, up, up. Ain't that a shame? Like it's going to come back down. Right, right. And then, and then mm-hmm. but you got the homeowners mm-hmm. who are sitting here and saying, they're not talking about home prices. Mm-hmm. Homeowners talk about home value. Mm-hmm. And home values, they're saying, are going up, 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 Mm -hmm. and keep on going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. When you're in the game, you're looking at it as a home value, and you want it to go up. When you're on the the sideline, you're Mm -hmm. watching it going like, man, when should I get in? Yeah. And you're missing it. Do you think that um, prices are going to come back down or flatten or soften? There may, I think there's right now, there's a lot of, because of the limited amount of inventory, there's still some overpriced homes. And most of of what you're seeing where home prices are starting to come down in Mm -hmm. some areas, it's it's the seller who kind of missed that window, the, those unicorn years where the mm-hmm. where the prices were skyrocketing, home right. values were skyrocketing, and, mm-hmm. and they kind of wished that they would have sold it back then. So now they're still trying to price it and test the market, right. and they kind of missed that market. So many of what you what a lot of what you're seeing is home homes that were uh, overpriced are starting to have have yeah. to humble yeah. themselves a bit. Yeah, this podcast is interesting because different cities around the nation, you just got to know your market. Yeah. There are some cities that like stuff stays on the market 90 days, 365 days. Okay, do a low ball offer. Check, you know, just negotiate it. it. Yeah. And market like we're in in Orlando, it's like you you, you got to come in pretty much at asking price, but just know that your benefit's going to be uh, where it appreciates over the next 12 to 24 months. And so I don't know. Um, being in Florida, I think I heard in Orlando there's 10,000 people a month moving here. Um, I don't know if it's true, but mm-hmm. I don't feel like prices are going to be going down. I no. don't care what happens to the interest rate because they taught me in real estate years ago, you either buy rent, rent or live in a tent. And so we're not going to live in a tent, so everybody has to buy or rent. Right. And rent's going up, and rent is not beneficial. That means that everybody's going to have to buy. And so right. people are coming in from all over the place to buy, and I might as well capitalize yeah. on that. Yeah, so. yeah, it, it is it's happening. People yeah. are moving here. Uh-huh. People are moving to Florida. The sunshine, yeah. no state income tax, right? I mean, it's the weather. Like, it's just there's a lot I of. I don't reasons. know what you've heard about Florida, but Florida is the will of God. Take it from <laughs> two people that live in Florida. It is, <laughs> it is the, the will, will of God. God. I like. We're it. getting a bad media rap from some people. They don't know what they're talking about. Florida oh, man. is the will of God. Oh man, oh, I got people all on my listen. YouTube channel telling me, "Oh, well, as long as y'all change, you want to, as soon as y'all change uh, governor, I'm listen, going. You know, all we this, two I'm, black people. We telling you, Florida is the will of God. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> I mean, there, there, there's there's some opportunities here that yeah. you may not be able to experience where you are. <laughs> Oh, that sounds like another podcast for another day. Man, I've enjoyed having you. Can you just tell people if they want to get in touch with you, how can they do that? Yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> you can uh, you can simply go to my website. It's themikecollier.com. The? Uh, the. T-H-E or T-H-E-E? 
Ooh, uh-huh. maybe I should change it to T H E E. Uh-huh. It's the, the Mike, Mike Collier. Collier. You know, it's funny when I say the Mike Collier, a lot of people say, I think I say the Mike Collier. Uh-huh. But when I used to say the Mike Collier, they make me like repeat myself. So uh-huh. I started saying the and then. Uh-huh. Uh, so anyway, yes, the Mike Collier. Dot com and you can book a book a schedule uh, book what we call a strategy call uh-huh. and and it can be fifteen minutes it can be thirty minutes but it's simply just to to get your questions answered yeah. just to see does just that like cost to, anything it doesn't cost you anything just say hey this is where I am I'm thinking about buying I'm thinking about selling I'm thinking about investing what do you think what can I do yeah. what is my buying power you would have that conversation absolutely hey. follow me on Instagram the Mike Collier it's the same place same thing everywhere Fa- Facebook on YouTube all the same thing but uh-huh. I, but I will tell you that having that conversation Mm -hmm. could simply spark or it could reaffirm the the, the questions that you have. And and you're probably thinking to yourself, man, should I be buying right now? Is it now the right time? Even where I am right now, I'm thinking about moving to Florida, whatever it is. Like, let's just have the conversation. We're going to talk credit, money and fear. Yeah. Right. And we're going to move all those things out of the way. And then you get to make that decision. Yeah. I believe there's somebody who's watching in some other city that they feel a divine connection to our church and they should be calling you to get plugged into a live church. It's just the it's it's the well they should be drinking from. I do it's agree. the brook they should be in. They want to pray about that. <laughs> they, they just pray That's about awesome. that. Hey, man, <laughs> we, we touch and agree. <laughs> thank you so much for dropping by the Absolutely. studio today. Hey, thank you guys for tuning in. If you're new to our audience, make sure you hit the subscribe button right now. And uh, if you enjoyed today's content, make sure you like, comment, share, review. We love your feedback. There's an email address if you have have any questions for us every once in a while we do an ask Ken and Tabitha Tabitha's not here today but hey we're going to answer your questions when she's back just know that we love you guys we're praying for you if you're if you're looking for an encounter with God come to a live conference it's happening the second week in October you can find the um, website in our show notes where you can get your tickets um, supplies are limited so make sure you get your ticket today thank you so much for tuning in to today and until next week we'll see you soon Peace. Peace.